Uh, hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the equivalent circuit of a three-phase induction motor. So now the three-phase induction motor can be seen as a transformer. So we all know that the transformer works on the principle of mutual induction. Okay. Similarly, the induction motor also works on the principle of uh, mutual induction. So in the transformer, we have uh, in the transformer we have primary. Similarly, in the three-phase induction motor, we have the stator similar to the primary of the transformer. So in the stator, we are going to give a three-phase AC supply. So it will produce a, a rotating magnetic field. So the magnetic field is set up uh, in the air gap provided in between the stator and the rotor. So this is the air gap and this is the flux. So again, uh, we have rotor inside. Both the rotor and the stator will be mounted on the same shaft. Okay. So this rotor uh, can be seen as a rotating a secondary of the transformer okay so the emf will be induced in the rotor due to mutual induction so we can uh, draw the equivalent circuit uh, in a similar fashion as that of the transformer on the stator we have the stator resistance and reactance and the no load components are okay r naught and x naught so this r naught is the core loss component and x naught is the magnetizing component so here uh, we have to represent the no load current i naught so I0 can be resolved into two components. One is IC, the current flowing through R0. Another one is IM, current flowing through X0. So IC is the active component and IM is the uh, magnetizing component of the no load current. So, so V1, let V1 be the supply voltage and I1 be the current flowing through the stator. Okay. So now uh, we can write R1 as the stator resistance. and uh, x1 as the stator reactance so these are the per phase values reactant stator resistance per phase and stator reactance per phase so similarly v1 is the stator voltage or the supply voltage i1 is the stator current current flowing through the stator winding and i0 is the no load current okay i0 is the no load current so i naught can be resolved into two component so which is ic the active component another one is i m the reactive component or the magnetizing component so ic is equal to i naught into cos phi naught and similarly i m can be written as i naught into sin phi naught so again r naught is given by v1 divided by ic and x naught is given by v1 divided by i m so these are all the components on the stator side similarly on the rotor side we can draw the rotor resistance r2 and the rotor reactance which is represented as s into x2 under running condition okay so these are the two components on the rotor side which is the rotor resistance and rotor reactance so these two are also the per phase values and E to R is the EMF induced in the rotor under running condition and I to R is the current flowing through the rotor under running condition. Okay, these are, these are all the components on the rotor side. So now we will draw the rotor equivalent circuit separately. So this is a rotor equivalent. Okay, so on the rotor side we have E to R which is nothing but the EMF induced in the rotor during running condition and R2 is the rotor resistance per phase value and S X2 is the rotor reactance under running condition which is a variable one. Okay. So now I2 R is the current flowing through the rotor. So this uh, E2 R can be written as S into E2. Similarly I2 R can be written as E2 R divided by square root of R2 square plus S X2 whole square. Okay. So this E2 R can be written as S into E2 divided by so from these uh, two uh, terms we can take this s square term outside okay so under root of s square so this will become r2 square divided by s, s square plus this term will become x2 square again this s square term can be taken outside this roof so it will become s into e2 divided by s into root of r2 by s whole square plus x2 square right so this s and s will get cancel them. So we can redraw the rotor equivalent in such a way that E2 as a EMF induced R uh, X2 as a reactance independent of slip value and R2 which is a variable 1 which has become R2 by S. Okay now 
R2 has become R2 by S and I2R will remain the same. Okay, I2R is the rotor current which is given by E2 divided by square root of R2 by S whole square plus X2 square. Okay, so now again we can uh, simplify this term by adding and subtracting R2. Okay, if we add and subtract this term will not change, right? So now this can be written as R2 plus R2 by S minus R2. So we have rearranged this one. So R2 plus taking R2 outside. So the remaining terms of 1 minus S minus 1. So this is R2 plus R2 into. So taking S as a common denominator, we can write it as 1 minus S by S. So now R2 by S is divided into two terms. One is R2 itself. Another one is R2 into 1 minus S by S. Okay. So this R2 is the rotor resistance per phase value and this R2 into 1 minus S by S is nothing but the electrical equivalent of the mechanical load connected to the motor. Okay, now we can redraw the uh, rotor equivalent circuit. This is R2 and X2 keeping uh, R2 and X2 as such and we have the variable load which is nothing but R2. So this is RL load, mechanical load. This is an electrical equivalent R2 into 1 minus S divided by S. So, this is the equivalent circuit of the rotor. E2 is the rotor induced EMF and I2 R is the rotor current. Okay. So, now we can uh, redraw the equivalent circuit of an induction motor. So, uh, we can draw the approximate equivalent circuit. So, in the approximate equivalent circuit of the induction motor, So, we can uh, bring this uh, terms R0 and X0 and we can connect it across the supply voltage. Okay, this V1. So, here I1 and here I0. So, this is R0 and X0. Okay, here IC will flow and here I. Okay, and then R1 and X1, resistance and reactance of the rotor. And we have the representation of the rotor core, sorry, stator. So, this is a stator resistance, stator reactance, this is a stator core. So, now uh, we have to represent the rotor. So, finally, we have derived the rotor uh, equivalent as R2, X2 with the load RL, which is a variable 1. Okay, this is RL, which is nothing but R2 into 1 minus S by Yes, sir. So, this is the approximate equivalent circuit of the induction motor R2, X2. So, here we have E2 and I2R is the current flowing through the rotor under running condition. Okay. So, now uh, if K is the transformation ratio. Okay. So, as we have seen in the transformer, so here also we have the transformation ratio which is defined as E2 by E1. So, if K is the transformation ratio, we can shift the rotor parameters to the stator side. Okay, referring to stator side uh, as we have done in the transformer. Okay, so in that case, if we shift R2 to the stator side, then R2 will become R2 dash. Okay, so R2 is given by R2 by K square. Similarly, X2 will become X2 dash so, X2 by K square. X2 dash is nothing but the rotor reactance referred to stator. Similarly, R2 dash is nothing but the rotor resistance referred to stator. Similarly, E2 will become E2 dash E2 by K. I2 R will become I2 R dash which is nothing but I2 R into K. And similarly, RL will become RL dash which is nothing but RL divided by K square. Okay, these are all the rotor parameters shifted to the stator side. Okay, so now we can draw the equivalent circuit referred to stator. So, this R0 and X0 will remain the same. So, R1 and X1 will remain the same. R1 and X1 are the stator parameters, it will remain the same. So, now we have shifted the these stator parameters E2 will become E2 dash okay and R2 will become R2 dash 
x2 will become x2 dash and then the load resistance rl will become rl dash so which is nothing but r2 dash into 1 minus s divided by s okay so here we have v1 i1 and then i0 so i1 is a current flowing through the state of winding which is nothing but i0 plus i2 r dash so here i2 r dash is the current flowing through the rotor okay so now we can add uh, these two resistances as r1 plus r2 dash which is nothing but the equivalent resistance now. okay r1 plus r2 dash so r1 plus r2 dash is nothing but the equivalent resistance of the induction motor referred to stator okay similarly we can write x1 e which is the equivalent res equivalent reactance of the induction motor referred to stator which is nothing but x1 plus x2 dash so this is the equivalent reactance of the induction motor referred to stator winding okay so now um, I2 R dash can be written as E2 dash divided by R1 E plus RL dash. Okay, this is the total resistance. Okay, here we have R1 plus R2 dash which is nothing but R1 E and similarly we have X1 plus X2 dash which is nothing but the uh, reactance plus J into X1 E. Okay, I2R dash is the rotor current. Okay, so now we'll de derive the power equation. We can write the power equation from the equivalent circuit. Okay, so now the rotor input power is given by 3 into V1 I1 cos phi, where cos phi is the power factor. Okay, so now uh, we have the stator losses like stator core loss and stator copper loss. So, the stator core loss can be written as IC square into R0. Okay. So, similarly, we have rotor copper, sorry, stator copper loss also. So, that can be written as 3 into I1 square into R1. So, these are the stator losses. Okay. So, now we can write the rotor copper loss. Okay. Rotor copper loss can be written as 3 into I2 R dash square into R2. So, rotor copper loss is represented as Vc. Okay. So, now we can derive the rotor input power. Okay. So, rotor input power is nothing but P2 which is given by Pc divided by S. Okay. So, P2 can be written as 3 into I2 R dash square R2 divided by S. So, this third equation is nothing but the rotor copper loss, okay, 3 into I2 R dash square into R2 and R2, so this is R2 dash, okay, referring to the equivalent circuit referred to stator. So, we have to write it as R2 dash. So, from these uh, two equations, uh, equation number 3 and 4, we can write PM, okay, PM is nothing but the uh, magnetic uh, total uh, sorry gross mechanical power developed in the rotor which is nothing but p2 minus pc so p2 is 3 into i2 r dash square r2 dash divided by s minus pc is 3 into i2 r dash square into r2 dash so taking 3 into i2 r dash square r2 dash outside so this is 1 minus s minus 1. So, on simplification we can write it as I2 R dash square R2 dash into 1 minus S divided by S. Okay, this is equation number 5. This is the gross mechanical power developed in the motor. So, now we can write the torque equation from PM. So, which is given by PM divided by omega. So, PM divided by omega is nothing but 2, n, 2 pi n by 60. So, n is the speed of the motor. So, now PM is nothing but 3 into I2 R dash square into R2 dash 
into 1 minus s by s whole divided by 2 pi by 60 multiplied by n okay so n is nothing but n is into 1 minus s up. so now we can write it as 3 into i2 r dash square r2 dash by s into 1 minus s whole divided by 2 pi by 60 into n can be written as n s into 1 minus s so this 1 minus s and 1 minus s terms will get cancelled so we can uh, simplify and write this uh, write this term as 9.55 okay so in the remaining terms are 3 into i2 r dash square r2 dash by s whole divided by n s r. so this is the torque equation derived from the equivalent circuit of the induction motor